There is the view of the racetrack and the starting area, and the clock has already started. The starting signal with Infanta Cristina, the enormous ship you can see there, setting these VO 65s off in style. And Sam, right at the moment, I mean, I think everything is looking pretty good, but I guess the biggest question is, is who should we be rooting for out on the water? We have six VO 65s. They will all be looking to really attack these conditions and get their best uh, maneuvers and tactical advantages in place to start this leg and find those uh, leads early on. So let's take a rundown of the teams at the moment and have a little bit of a pick between who we think is going to be performing here. Well, let's start with the big name, Mirpuri Foundation Racing Team. They're from Portugal with skipper Pablo uh, uh, Antonio Fontes. They've been boasting a 100% homegrown crew and they are set to set the standard during the build-up of the race with uh, a strong performance leading into this edition. Then Ambassel 2, skipper Rokas Melavinkas. He's gone from rookie to skipper, now takes his Lithuanian team onto the water to begin stage one. He's built a strong team, racing as much for themselves as for their country, and it's the Atlantic section they're looking forward to. Team Yayo from Holland, skipper Yalama Van Beek, another team boasting young and up-and-coming talent. For this first stage, they pulled in Bauer Becking, an ocean race heavyweight, and they will be hoping that this gives them the strong start they'll need. Wind Whisperer Racing Team and skipper Pablo Arate. Now, they won the import race here in Alicante, stretching away from the rest of the field as the wind went light. Now, this four-time ocean race veteran will be hoping to do the same as stage one gets underway today. Mexico won the ocean race in 1973. Now Viva Mexico is here with skipper Eric Brockman leading a team that is hoping to bridge that gap from the races past 50 years ago. Some big names, some big skill as well, and they'll be hoping for a strong performance. Austrian Ocean Racing powered by Team Geneva and skipper Jörg Gerwin Jansen coming into this event having led a passionate campaign. They'll be finishing in their home port of Geneva, Italy, but before there they'll need to find their best speed in the opening two stages. Here are our VO65s getting ready for the start. There's been a lot of talk about the breeze here, a lot of talk about what they're going to do for this start. Sam, it is a reaching start at the moment as we go on board here. And all the eyes right now looking out for the other teams. Picking the right place on the start line is it's always crucial. Yeah, it's crucial. We can see uh, on Yayo here. Um, they're so close, uh, the boats are so close. and. Uh, just on that first shot, I did see that they don't all have the same sail choices. So, yeah, you can see uh, Mir Puri uh, deploying their mast head zero and all the others on J1. So, um, they're already we're going to see uh, see what this uh, different sail choice change is going to do. Well, the start underway for the first of the offshore stages in the Ocean Race Sprint and a, a good start from off the line. But the interesting thing for me, Sam, was this is meant to be a reaching start. They're meant to be able to lay this line very easily. It's got them pretty tight on an upwind course, actually. They didn't look like they were coming off that line at 90 degrees. No, it looks pretty tight and it looks like, especially for the lurid, um, the lurid boats, um, they only just made it past the pin and uh, potentially uh, might not make it uh, on one tack to, to the Mark 1. Well, right now you can see Wind Whisper Racing Team, the red hull on the right-hand side of your picture as we go to the helicopter for overview. They are getting ready with what appears to be their masthead code zero. The breeze perhaps getting a fraction down, so the team's just thinking about changing to those sails. But right now, with this wind direction, they are going to have to do a manoeuvre on this first leg of the import section that they shouldn't be having to do. They are going to have to tack here, Sam. I mean, I, I hope they've prepared for this. Uh, I'm sure they've prepared for every eventuality and, and for sure now the wind has really dropped since uh, just over the last 20 minutes. Um, so it looks like the land's heating up um, and that's going to change uh, the wind here on the race course um, and potentially, yeah, potentially tacking and p potentially lots of other maneuvers to do uh, uh, before they manage to get offshore. board there with Wind Whisperer Racing Team and they've added another what half boat length at least to that advantage and the interesting thing for me Sam was during that import race they started at the pin end uh, 
arguably a risky place to start in terms of keeping the clear air, but they've managed to punch through. Right now, if the wind stays at this direction, then Wind Whisperer looks set to be able to crawl their way out ahead. But the wind is in what we would call a left-hand phase. If it swings back to the right, then that's where you can see Team Yayo and Murpuri Foundation Racing Team, all those boats to windward starting to come good. And in fact, just look at the difference in the angle here with Team Yayo sound. They're a lot higher, much tighter to the wind. Yeah, it looks like uh, the, the boats up to windward are doing a bit better. Uh, we can see uh, Wind Whisper now uh, have decided to deploy their masthead zero, um, which uh, they could see Mirpuri sailing pretty well um, up to windward of them. Um, so a uh, sail change there from, from Wind Whisper, and it looks like Mirpuri made the right choice. On board at the moment with Team Yayo, skipper Yelma van Beek leading a team that includes five Dutch sailors under 30 and certainly of the two boats that we can see from that shot Mirpuri Foundation Racing Team and Amber Sail 2 they're to windward looks really light there now actually they're, they're Mirpuri they're, they've got hardly any boat on it, hardly any heel on um, so these conditions are changing really really quickly I know it's always hard to tell with these black sails but it almost looked to me as well with that masthead code zero on Mirpuri Foundation Racing Team was struggling to set but as we look at it now from the side it's the Portuguese boat Mirpuri Foundation Racing Team which is pushing ahead Ambersail 2 is struggling and ahead of those two Team Yayo this boat here they have stuck with their jib sail they haven't put that masthead code zero up um, and these small decisions here they have a huge consequence to the performance of the boat Exactly, but it's not easy to switch between the two um, uh, for Yayo because their, their master zero is on, on the deck. So to change sail, they'll have to hoist the sail up uh, before they can deploy it. Um, and that's a lot of effort. Wind Whisperer Racing Team still in the lead. Boat speed is good. It's the best of the fleet, over eight and a half knots. But as we look at where that first mark is, it's mark one. They are laying mark two. But so this tack is very much on here. This was not the intention of the race control team. We know that the breeze through this afternoon is going to put in some twists and turns and not stay in one place. And it's making life, well, I mean, for us viewing it, it's gonna be a lot more interesting than just a drag race to mark one. Yeah, exactly. Um, but obviously, yeah, you said this tack, but they're actually gonna have to tack twice to get around that first mark. Um, and that's a lot of effort and energy for the, for the crew. Um, who uh, then have to go offshore for five days after all these manoeuvres. Um, so, yeah, it's always really hard when you've got all your gear on ready to go offshore for the night and then you've got to um, put these massive tacks in and um, you get really hot and sweaty and <laughs> you have to go and change your, change your clothes before you go offshore. On board at the moment with Wind Whisper Racing Team, eight and a half knots and... Right now, have a look at that heading there, 160 degrees. That's going to be something that the navigators are going to be keeping a very close eye on. And, and look at this, Mirpuri Foundation Racing Team. Sam, they have really bared away here. I'm guessing a head sail change. Um, I think they're struggling a little bit in the um, in the wind shadow from Team Yayo, I think, who's up to windward of them. Um, and they're going to they have to bear away to keep the boat speed on and, and try and sail forward. So that's, that's Mariana Lobato, who's, uh, sh I think she's doing the bow on uh, Mirpuri uh, for this leg. Um, an amazing sailor and uh, it looks to me, we couldn't hear all everything what she was saying, but she looked a little bit frustrated by the, their position currently on, on this uh, first part of the, uh, of the leg. Uh, and of course there are miles to claim back any uh, advantage that you've lost but this is crucial just this bit as you were saying before it's that advantage that you want to game is that confidence boost but look at this master code zero here on wind whisper racing team they haven't got the disadvantage of having anyone to windward of them they've got the freshest breeze but they are having to strap that sail right in yeah that's uh, they're fully uh, trimmed on maximum they can and you probably see the sail will be touching the spreaders to leeward, um, so they can't they can't put it in any every any tighter than that. Um, but they've got to try and get their boat um, as pointing as high as possible to minimise the distance they're going to sail when they have to tack and effectively zigzag up towards towards Mark One. 
following here, Amber Sail 2 with Team Yayo, the green head sail wedged in between them. And Wind Whisperer with the red hull just coming into view on the right hand side. These three boats at the moment, different head sail choices, the masthead, Code Zero, the big, what we would probably say is a more traditional reaching sail. It's usable upwind, but of course, if this breeze starts coming back up here, then Team Yayo, the Dutch team, will be very glad that they have stuck with a more traditional head sail choice. Also the Dutch team, and I think they're just throwing into attack there. It's so much easier to attack with the J1 up. Um, they can just flip those tacks through and, uh, and, and get the boat going again really quickly, whereas the boats for the masthead zero have got to furl it up to be able to tack and then redeploy the sail after. Oh, and there we go, a, a, a tack change from Team Yayo. That's pretty cool uh, manoeuvre to do because obviously they've um, deployed the sail during the tack, so they've minimised the, the downtime, so to speak, of the boat speed um, during the tack. Well, right now on the import section of stage one of the Ocean Race Sprint, we have two boats on port tack. One of them, Team Yayo, that we're watching at the moment. The other at the back for the moment, at least, the Austrian Ocean Racing powered by Team Geneva. There is that tack change that enormous uh, head sail there having to be pulled down that big jib having to be pulled down hanked on to the uh, forestay for the vo 65s and a good deployment of the masthead code zero already in tight trimmed but let's take a look at exactly where that fleet has set up so as i was saying we've got two boats now coming across on starboard team yayo and the austrian ocean racing powered by team geneva wind whisperer still in the lead but sam what should be a reach to mark one now the fleet widening up it's very tricky if you're in first place to try and lock down the attacks from either side yeah it's, um it, they're going to still be really close when they come into mark one and we can see wind whispered they've they've just tacked as well um looks like they're on the ley line uh, so they'll they'll be heading straight towards mark one and they'll have to do the tack as they round the mark um to head towards mark two um, and the next question is, uh, it's, so is this going to make the leg um, the leg from Mark 2 to 3, uh, instead of being a reaching leg, is going to be more downwind, or, or can the race committee change the course? Well, I, I think this course is designed to kind of swallow up any small variations in the breeze, but this has been a big one, and it rolled in just before the start. The start happens on time, no matter what, and here we are. Wind Whisperer Racing Team now coming across on port tack from the left-hand side of the course, the side of the course that they were leading on. Some big names on this boat at the moment. We've got Pablo Arata at the back, just one hand on the backstage just to check that the runner has come on. But also, uh, Sam, you know, Neil McDonald I saw uh, uh, hanging around the boat on, on the dock and stepping on board for this first stage. Uh, yeah, I think uh, Neil's on board for... for most of the sprint and uh, it's great to see him uh, offshore bringing his, all his experience he's one of my sailing heroes all-time sailing heroes <laughs> on board at the moment with wind whisperer racing team that's a good view for any sailor there when you're looking back behind you off the quarter to uh, see where your competition is. But to leeward of Wind Whisperer Racing Team is this boat here, Team Yayo, along with Austrian Ocean Racing powered by Team Geneva. These three boats are on port tack, heading over to the right-hand side. As Sam was pointing out earlier, they've got at least one more tack to go. And a little bit of activity on board here, and that's going to give us some clue as to when we're going to go for this next tack. And moving some sails here, change of the stack. I mean, what does this indicate here, Sam? Um, I think the I was looking at the stacks. They've got different different boats have different choices. Um, obviously, um, the sails are on deck uh, for this uh, part of the leg, whereas in the inshore race we didn't see any sails, other sails on deck. Um, obviously, they want all those sails out there ready so that when they go offshore, they can quickly get the stack in the right place and optimize the boat speed. Um, so yeah, I think they'll be dragging them forward um, because the wind is lighter than planned to get that weight forward and try and reduce the wetted surface area um, of the hull. On board with Team Yayo and 
moving those sail bags, incredibly heavy sail cloth, moving that weight forward rather than for a sail change, just to keep the trim of the boat, the balance of the boat right for the conditions. The look over their corner, the competitors at the moment, and Team Yayo right now in second place. It's the Austrian Ocean Racing, powered by Team Genova, to Leward. And they haven't had the best uh, beginning to stage one. They came off that line poorly. Now they're deploying their masthead code zero. But they are going to be coming in on that starboard ley line to that first mark. So they do have a, an option here to come in with some rights. Yeah, so this could be um, an interesting uh, mark rounding because uh, uh, they're all pretty close still and um, uh, there's some big manoeuvres to, to get right, um, to nail off and uh, to be able to get around that mark and, and uh, heading towards mark two. That is where they're aiming for. Bottom right-hand side of your screen, that white square, that's mark one. It does look to be Wind Whisperer still in the lead. They've got a strong tactical position over the top of Team Yayo. And right there, just sailing with a little bit of a gust as well, getting themselves set up for what should be their last tack before rounding. Team Yayo to Leward, but a little bit bow forward. They are going for the tack. And Sam, it's a good opportunity to see just how much work is needed to tack the boats with these masthead code zeros. Yeah, they'll be, they will have connected all three pedestals in to fail that sail. So there'll be six people grinding that sail to furl it and then grinding on the new winch to trim it, um, fully trim it on. Um, and you can see there's uh, other people on other winches with the top handles in because um, the grinders are all on the sheet. Um, you've got to also top handle the runner and top handle the board down. So uh, there's tons of work to be done in attack and uh, it's, yeah, it's pretty tiring. Wind Whisper Racing Team picking the right ley line and now bearing away round the top of the course. Uh, the first leg of this import section, including two tacks that were never really designed to be there. But the Polish team picking the right breeze, picking the right angles and managing to get themselves around. So this is going to be a short leak, a short, short reach uh, on this dog leg uh, before then uh, potentially is going to be a downwind leg back up to, uh, to Mark 3. Well, the top of that uh, picture just there, we can see the Austrian Ocean Racing Project. They have, uh, they have tacked and they have parked up a little bit. Meanwhile, Wind Whisperer Racing Team finding some good breeze at the windward edge of the course. On that reach, still working hard, still trimming those sails as we get a little chance to see on board as well. And it's always nice when you're a sailor, when you need to look up and have a look at the competition and it is behind you. But here's a nice moment here for Team Yayo coming in. They have rights coming in uh, on starboard, but no matter, they will be across the bows of Ambersail 2 coming in on port tack from the right hand side of your picture. So first round at the first mark, Wind Whisper Racing Team, then Team Yayo and now Ambersail 2 looking for attack. And this tack needs to be good if they want to stay on the heels of the Dutch boat in front of them. Ambersail 2, furling that masthead code zero, and it looks good, but that tack and bear away, it's a lot of rudder. It's a big turn to put into one manoeuvre. Yeah, um, it's it's slow to get the boats going again, and they, they look like they're pretty close, so they've held the deploy to make sure they get past the mark to not risk getting the sail or the sheet touching the mark um, as they as they go around the mark. So losing a little bit there with that tight rounding and um, maybe you can see Mirpuri sailing team uh, maybe slightly better uh, with their tack and their um, mark rounding catching up a little bit with that uh, slightly better maneuver. Next to come in to the mark, it's Viva Mexico with skipper Eric Brockman and one more turn here and Sam there's a little bit of a maneuver here on these reaches to what they're going to do with their keels and their dagger balls but right now let's go on board with Viva Mexico and we just see how hard they've got to work view off the back of Viva Mexico showing Austrian Ocean Racing power by Team Genova hey, 
So you can see they're deploying that big deploy, um, how hard it is to grind. It looked like they were not all on the uh, sheet winch. Um, I think they only had two grinders uh, on the on the deploy and that made it a little bit harder for them. Look at the lead now for Wind Whisperer Racing Team. I, I mean, everyone will be thinking back to that import. Everyone will be thinking that this was the team that managed to come off the line well hold on to their first place and then extend and it looks like in the opening stages of stage one wind whisper racing team are doing the same again in the waters of alicante yeah they seem to got got everything uh, right um, it's all going well for for their wind whisper they've chosen the right strategy and the crew have nailed the maneuvers which uh, maybe weren't really the maneuvers that were in the game plan probably when they left the dock and they've managed to adapt to these changing conditions uh, really well um, and uh, and get those uh, tacks off perfectly. Wind Whisper Racing Team in first place onto the downwind section of this course, a section that wasn't meant to be downwind, but the wind shifts are coming in here thick and fast in Alicante. And Sam, you know the VO65, you've taken one around the world. They're still with that masthead code zero downwind. It's not the only sail they could use. No, it's not the only sail. They, they now have an A2 as well, which is a, a, a spinnaker, and I believe they can fell that spinnaker as well. Um, but right now in these light, these winds are quite light. Um, I don't think it's worth making the sail change to the spinnaker. Well, if you want to keep yourself up to date with all the action here, scan the QR code in the bottom right-hand corner. That will direct you to the Eurosport video page where you can watch all the exciting highlights from recent and current port races as well as stay informed with interviews and news from the ocean race as we make our way around the world. Team Yayo now round, and look at that. It's been a long time since we saw Wind Whisper Racing Team round that mark. You know, the lead is getting bigger and bigger for the Polish. Yeah, it's definitely a, a comfortable lead for them. And uh, But what's good is that the rest of the fleet are really close. So um, uh, we could see some place changing uh, in this downwind leg as well because we've got jibes, um, choices to make to be made. It's not a reaching leg anymore. So uh, there are um, options to, to be able to catch up or for some place changing. Just having a little flick through some of the data coming off the boats uh, from the water right now and Wind Whisperer Racing Team have been putting in some of the strongest numbers, some of the highest peak speeds. It is just a snapshot, but they've been hitting almost 11 knots of boat speed. And the only other boat that's been doing something similar is this one here, Mirpuri Foundation Racing Team, the team that we would expect to be, well, the favourites and sort of setting down the pace. But I think that crown has to go to the Polish team. Mirpuri Foundation Racing Team at the moment on the windward side of Amber Sail 2 as we just go round that uh, top of the course. We're now onto the long downwind leg. We're going to see some jibes on this leg. Not meaning to, but look at this. Look at the change in the wind right now just in front of Murpuri Foundation Racing Team. I mean, is that coming from the helicopter? Is that coming from something local? Yeah, it looks uh, It looks like the wind's a little bit all over the place there and uh, Mirpuri um, doing the right thing, getting the weight forward. Um, not making things complicated for themselves. I saw that one of the other boats is de deploying a stay sail, but they've kept just with the two sails and trying to do the best they can to, to keep the boat moving forward. Antonio Fontes, skipper of Murpo Foundation Racing Team, just walking up to the front. Amber sail two, two lured of the Portuguese team, managing to find their way through. I mean, that was an enormous wind shift, a, a bubble in the breeze. And these two boats are both caught in it. They've really had to head up hard here. Ahead of them, Team Yayo sailing on a bit of a better course, but their speed has dropped down to only two knots. So we are in a bit of a park up here, and Sam, They've chosen to have these big masthead code zeros. It does make uh, what, reacting to these changes in the breeze that a little bit harder. Yeah, a little bit harder, but um, it's the the easier sail, I guess, to, to use because you can furl it up, you can jibe quickly. Um, the, they did the right thing to not think about using an A2 or a spinnaker um, uh, for this lake. Well, a little bit of an interesting moment here. We've got uh, the Austrian Ocean Racing powered by Team Geneva coming up on starboard. Viva Mexico wanting to uh, jibe over there. And I think here clearly forcing 
uh, the Austrian Ocean Racing, powered by Team Geneva, with uh, Gerwin Jansen on the helm, forcing them to jibe over. Um, I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen there, exactly what the, the jury will think of that, but Viva Mexico at the moment with that masthead code zero now furled, and a little bit of a place change. It is at the back of the field, but there is sometimes an advantage when the breeze goes very patchy like this. Sometimes there's an advantage to be behind. You, you, you can see what's coming. Yeah, you can see what's coming, and you can try and avoid the, the wind holes, as we saw. Um, um, obviously, they're jiving to try and avoid that 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 hole in the wind that um, unfortunately Mia Puri and Amber Sale sailed into um, and it's yeah it's uh, must be a it's a tough one if you look all over the race course there's all the boats are doing different boat speeds right now in all different angles <laughs> but the speeds are starting to come back up I think that we, we have been expecting a big change in the breeze uh, we've got the uh, mocha departure for leg one of the ocean race coming up uh, in about an hour's time and we knew there was going to be a wind change at one point it looks like it's fallen on the vo 65s here and well somebody who's been able to exploit it at least has been austrian ocean racing powered by team geneva sitting now on that windward bow forward position on Viva Mexico. Murpuri Foundation Racing Team also potentially being caught out on the right hand side but look at the differences in speed. Barely four knots towards the top of the course with eight knots with Team Yayo in the middle and Wind Whisperer just a little bit behind around about halfway down this leg. I think the advantage for Wind Whisperer being in the lead it, it's got to feel like a kind of a poison chalice right now because you might be sailing into the hole. The teams behind you will see it and be able to sail around. Nerves will be very, very, very frayed on the Polish boat. Yeah, it's definitely the moment where they'll be trying to get the heads out of the boat um, and looking around, uh, trying to find the best uh, wind where there is a little bit of wind, trying to avoid the no wind zones, looking at what's happening coming from the land. Uh, it's really tricky when you've got this gradient coming from from hot land. Um, it's probably yeah, the the trickiest uh, situation. Um, but I think there we're on Wind Whisper. The, maybe we can see again the experience uh, uh, showing. And I uh, know Axel Magdal again is a, a very experienced navigator and weather expert uh, who knows Alicante pretty well too. So uh, um, I wouldn't be surprised if he'd have. Um, had people posted along the shore and up the mountains um, prior to the start to get all the information he could just before the just before the race set off. Well, just to provide a little bit of context there, I mean that's because that's what he did for you, wasn't it? In Team SEA, you are used to uh, seeing the attention to detail that Magdal, uh, Axel Magdal brings to this. And at the moment, we can't rule out any more wind changes. But as we go to the uh, virtual graphic. Team Yayo at the moment to the left, out of picture on the right hand side, Wind Whisper Racing Team. And I think right now, with the wind at the moment, they've played this, this most recent shift really nicely. They're almost laying the bottom of the course. They've still got around about 2,500 meters to go before they get to the bottom, but they could almost, maybe with a touch more pressure, they wouldn't need to jive. Yeah, I, I think they've, they've obviously maybe a little bit of being in the right place at the right time but um yeah they're definitely the boat that sailed the least distance um and that's made a difference interesting to see the forward uh, crew member sitting on the right hand side of wind whisperer with the binoculars and pointing out to the back what's going on in front and uh, just as we say that you can see wind whisperer turning up to their left our right and that might be meaning that the wind going a little bit light or shifting again, but they've survived so far those shifts as uh, now, Sam, we saw this <laughs> in the import race. Talk us through it. So this is the baton kicker. Um, so it's a, it's a job you, you got to like heights to be able to do this one. Um, <laughs> so there it's the bowman who's, who's up the rig. Um, obviously these full baton sails, depending on the baton, baton tension, uh, more or less easy to flip through when the wind's really light and you've got a masthead zero um, funneling the wind through behind the mainsail it's really hard to pop those battens through and this guy's even up there is having a struggle he's got to really throw his whole weight onto the sail to be able to push that baton through and it could be that maybe they've tightened those baton tensions just a little bit too much perhaps because of the weather forecast that's coming up
Oh. If they don't manage to pop it, they are going to be going slow for the next few uh, boat lengths. Watching the four deck on board Austrian Ocean Racing powered by Team Geneva. And I think congratulations are in order because that last flying kick just managing to pop those full length batons in their mainsail. It's not going to be the only time they need to do it because we're going to see this boat jiving again. But this team coming off the line uh, behind the others, sailing that first upwind leg, struggling for pace compared with the other teams, but they managed to make good as the boats in front of them just parked up around Mark II. Now they're heading downwind on the left-hand side as we look down the course. And they've got Viva Mexico, which they have overtaken on their right, but just ahead as we go on board here with skipper Gerwin Jansen. They have got Mirpuri Foundation Racing Team, Ambersail 2, and perhaps Team Yayo just coming into view. The boat out in the lead, Wind Whisperer Racing Team, they have sailed, well, is it luck, is it skill? I mean, surely it's skill because they did the same in the import race. They have picked their way through the pockets of no breeze, the shifts and everything. And Sam, a little bit of action on the bow here. So they are, I mean, they, they seem like they are very astutely preparing for breeze that we can't really see yet. Yeah, it's difficult from our, our viewpoint now where um, we can't see everything, but uh, it does look like First of all, they've picked up more breeze as they come up towards that top mark. They're, they're going faster than the others and extending that lead. Um, and yeah, there was Nettie up on the bow uh, sorting out the sails um, for potentially for the, uh, the, the beat that is going to be coming up. Looks windy there for me. Looks windy to me. So uh, you can hear, um, I think that was Neil McDonald's voice. They're looking up the race course and they're trying to work out the breeze. So he was saying, looks windy to me. I think they're working, they're trying to figure out whether they change to the J1 for the upwind leg. Um, obviously that's a big call for them to make and they're the leading boat, so they can't watch what the one in front does. They're gonna be the one that everyone else is watching. And we're pretty lucky to get this uh, front row view as we are on board still with Wind Whisperer Racing Team. We get to enjoy both now. And we were saying earlier that if they got a little bit more pressure or indeed if that breeze went a little bit right, they would be laying Mark Three, the bottom of the run. And it's happened now. And I would say that they've got a little bit of both here. They look a lot more pressed than they were before, but also with a lot more breeze. And in fact, the top of that mainsail just starting to luff a little bit with the back winding from the masthead Code Zero. They're almost now a little bit excess power. Yeah, you can see the, uh, well, from the previous uh, images, we could see the, the canted keel fully canted up to windward. So the, they've got max power now and they're, yeah, they're, they're easing their sails. That's um, a lot of heel angle. You can, we're sailing the 65s with up to 30 degree heel angle, which is a lot. And uh, yeah, I think they're up to <laughs> the upper limit of range of the sail there. And compare that heel to the other two boats that we can see here. Murpo Foundation Racing Team just going out of view on the left and Team Yayo and Wind Whisperer Racing Team are certainly heeled over. But the breeze now is with Team Yayo as well. Yelma van Beek on the wheel, pushing the boat down. They'll be very relieved now that they're in breeze. And it's enough to also push them down towards the bottom of the course. And that might be an advantage to the boats in second and third for Team Yayo, Ambersail 2, Murpuri Foundation Racing Team. They've all been pushed down to this mark, meaning that Wind Whisperer Racing Team might have sailed a little bit of extra distance compared to these teams. So. The question of who will be leading as we exit Alicante, not yet decided. Still some time for the Polish to perhaps lose that lead. And we've got, um, coming into this mark, so now we've got a sail change to do. There's breezes on, so it's not going to be so easy to fail the masthead zero. Uh, changing to the J1. Uh, so you've got to, they've all got to nail that manoeuvre, which is probably the first time we see them uh, uh, doing a maneuver in the breeze um, and let's see who can do that best Team Yayo there they've already got their J1 up um, Not trimmed on so that they not um, they're keeping the maximum 
pressure in the masthead zero so you've got to let your j1 flap until you're ready to until you're ready to trim on and furl and switch sails um, but they they've done an early hoist to be sure they get everything right this breeze is providing all sorts of challenges for the sailors right now. Every single time, it seems like they decide this is the sail to use, this is the angle that's best. The wind either increases, decreases, changes direction. They've really got to stay on their toes. And we are now, thankfully for them at least, coming down to the bottom of that downwind section. They'll be certainly pretty happy to leave, I think, this tough import uh, section of stage one and get out into a little bit more of the open Mediterranean Sea where the decisions aren't quite so pressing. Team Yayo leading Mirpuri Foundation racing team but ahead of the Dutch boat is Wind Whisper racing team and there you can see just how much that shift has brought Team Yayo back into the game here as the Dutch boat bears away now for the furl of the masthead code zero as Mirpuri Foundation racing team closer to camera also making a change with that J sail coming up and the masthead code zero getting ready to go away. It's going to be here the battle of the sail changes. Whoever gets this change smoothly will be closing up the distance between the Polish boat in first place. Wind Whisper Racing Team down to the bottom of the course. Mark three. Two more marks to go around here before we then start making our way out into the Mediterranean and on to Cabo Verde. There should be a very short distance between Mark 3 and Mark 4. It should have just been uh, a very simple case of just hardening up, pulling in your sails, but it will be attack here. The breeze has shifted back to where the race management team were assuming it would come from. The wind is up as well. That's why we're seeing that masthead go zero go away. One more tack to go here for Wind Whisperer Racing Team. Well, the boat that you can see all the way at the top of your picture, shall we say, languishing a little bit behind, is Viva Mexico. Eric Brockman, you saw at the top of the course, trying to jive for the best of the breeze. They got forced to hold that jive by Austrian Ocean Racing Power by Team Geneva, and they have been left behind as the new wind has flowed in from the other side of the course. Murpuri Foundation Racing Team now rounding the bottom in second place, and plenty of breeze as well. Yeah, it's looking uh, looking like great sailing conditions up here at, um, at the top of the course. Um, and I'm just wondering whether, I guess they're probably going to leave those masthead zeros up in the air um, because potentially they're going to sail back out of the breeze as they head back south uh, towards the leaving gate. Amber sail two, the boat to the right-hand side of picture. And then Murpuri Foundation Racing Team just behind them in fourth. And Rokas Melovinkas now, yeah, that was a smooth furl for the masthead code zero. They're just trying to line themselves up for the perfect turn around mark three. It's pretty close. This turn, absolutely crucial here, and I wonder why. That is why uh, Ambersail 2, the boat at the bottom of your picture, Rokas Melovinkas was just wanting to hold that turn, get a tight exit here, just to really damage the breeze that's going into Murpuri Foundation Racing Team in fourth place. Yeah, they want to protect that because obviously they're going to have to tack and uh, they don't want Murpuri to, to come up and, and prevent them from, from tacking on the ley line. Murpo Foundation Racing Team now around in fourth place and each of these boats minutes really behind Wind Whisper Racing Team and that might not seem like much but they are fighting hard for every second here so the Polish boat Wind Whisper Racing Team have I'm going to say it stolen the crown of favorites for performance from Murpo Foundation Racing Team this boat here Wind Whisper Racing Team they put in an incredible performance in the import race last weekend and they haven't put a foot wrong so far here in Alicante Well, they're on starboard tack, and as Sam was saying earlier, that masthead code zero is still up. Team Yayo to the left and behind, tacking earlier than Wind Whisperer Racing Team. Perhaps the tack here from the leaders, the Polish boat, wanting just to get over and sit on top of Team Yayo in second place. Surely the only boat that they're really worried about right now. Yeah, I guess that's the safe 
the safe manoeuvre to protect that um, their lead. Um, and this is obviously a, a long reach. They've decided that the breeze is in now and they don't need to leave that masthead zero up in the air. Obviously, that creates a lot of air drag. Um, so these boats have got uh, a lot of crew on board, so it's it's easy in inverted commas to drop that down and um, and maximise the the boat speed and, and not have that up in the air dragging, slowing the boat down. Tanius decision on board Wind Whisperer Racing Team and Team Yaya. As you say, Sam, the breeze they certainly seem confident that it's established itself and the masthead code zero is coming down. Worth just mentioning at this point that all of these boats do have guests on board. Um, they're not doing the full leg. They're not doing the full 2,000 miles they have uh, jumped off at the back of these boats and they're going to get picked up straight away but what a way to uh, send your team off hold on for the first couple of legs of the import section pat them on the back and then jump over the side team yayo here they are making a strong performance of that lured position right now they tacked early after mark four so they have a little bit of leverage off to that left-hand side. And if the breeze goes to the left, they should be doing quite nicely. But as I say that, here comes a little tack for them. They want to go out to the other side. Ah, and their wind whisper following them. So obviously, uh, maybe it's something we didn't, maybe a wind shift we didn't quite see, Niall. And uh, uh, these crews are just on it, on the numbers. And uh, um, obviously that tack, you, you've got to have the foredeck clear to be able to throw that tack in. And um, so the, the, the foredeck crew have been working really hard to clear the bow during as quickly as possible uh, after dropping the masthead zero so that they can do a clean tack. Um, uh, so yeah, pressure on the whole crew to be able to let the tactic, tactician go where he wants to go. You are completely right there, Sam. I mean, this is the tack really for the ley line. That pressure already taking them towards the top of the course as we have simultaneous onboards and helicopter shots of Wind Whisper Racing Team. And worth just pointing out that the lure daggerboard all the way down, meaning that that keel fully swung up to windward at the moment. They're having to use that lure daggerboard. That gives us some indication as how the breeze has improved since that uh, light spot on the other side of the racetrack. Now, the Polish boat, Wind Whisperer Racing Team, tacking over. It's such a different manoeuver with only the uh, the J sail up. Yeah, and he's uh, almost looks to me like he's made a, a gain there and crossing quite far clear ahead of uh, Team Yayo and going around this second mark. And uh, so they'll be should be reaching to the gate now um, and it looks like there's still enough breeze to do that on a on a j on a j1 but i think they're the four deck crew are doing everything they can to get the next sail ready and we can see the rest of the crew bringing all the stack up to windward because i think this starboard tack now is going to be quite a long one uh, to take them uh, down south to uh, the, the further gate at the islands Team Yayo, second place, the Dutch boat now tacking round, and they'll be pleased with this performance here. I mean, uh, Jelma van Beek doing a great job, putting some pressure on Wind Whisper Racing Team. Ultimately, wasn't to be, but let's have a look at that delta there. 43 seconds, so Team Yayo hot on their heels and arguably getting a little bit closer as the race goes on. But if you're watching these two boats now round that last turning mark and you're wondering why it is they seem a little bit more relaxed, that's because the course has sort of returned to form a little bit more of a drag race now so all those ins and outs and tactical decisions and fighting for the lead that's kind of behind them certainly for the immediate future wind whisper racing team is going to hold on to first place as they lead the fleet out team yaya will be comfortable in second place and i think certainly they should be pleased with their performance here in alicante the stack to windward in the middle of the boat on Wind Whisperer Racing Team. And uh, Sam, I'm looking at a lot of these sailors, and at the moment they're still in their T-shirts, but they're going to have to change that pretty shortly as we watch Mirpuri Foundation Racing Team hot on their heels of Amber Sail 2. Both of these boats needing to get around that last mark, and it's close for the Portuguese here. Yeah, that was quite a big duck. The, they had to go uh, duck behind Amber Sail, uh, so they're happy to be... Uh, uh, they'll be happy to have caught up a little bit and uh, have a boat to try and overtake on this next uh, reaching leg. Just see how much Ambersail 2 were over that ley line. They've already started bearing away and that was a very 
Uh, good position for them to force Murpuri Foundation Racing Team to making that decision to go behind. So, Ambercell 2, Rokas Malavink as the skipper, they are round in third place. The Lithuanian team getting the better of the Portuguese for now. Murpuri Foundation Racing Team in fourth place. But uh, right now, let's, let's check in with some of the other drama that's out there on the water. We have got jumpers on all of these boats needing to get themselves off oh, these boats. And this was the scene on board Viva Mexico. Oh, no somersaults. Just a just a straight feet in jump. That's a, a classic. I, I give him a five out of ten for that. <laughs> <laughs> it's a fantastic way to get oh, out there on the boats and enjoy that racing. And also, just to give everybody that, that really nice send-off, the... Uh, the guests on board jumping off with full survival suit, they'll get picked out of the water straight away. The reason they're doing it now is because we are starting to stretch out as we go on board here with Murphy Foundation Racing Team to that more offshore part of this challenge. Sam, it, it, it's, a, it's a mentality shift, it's a gear change, clothing, I mean, what kind of things are they going to have to do now over the next, what, hour? Just interrupt you, Nan. I think uh, we've got a live jumper coming up, so let's listen to them. Will we see a somersault here? Oh, what a disappointment. Oh, we just lost Pixel, but we've just got it. Let's stay with it. That's not bad. That's not bad. That's a, that's a good five out of ten here. We're hoping we're going to build on that as we make our way around the uh, the ocean race sprint. So yeah, the crews. You were saying, Niall, that they're um, they're they're changing mode, in, as we say, and uh, heading out of this short, pretty frantic course onto the first longer leg, heading south. Uh, they're going to have to go around um, a last mark around the, some islands just south of Alicante um, and then basically getting into that offshore mode. Um, have we got the stack right? Have we, uh, when do we get into a watch system? Uh, let's make the boat go as fast as possible, the trim. Uh, there'll be some of the guys who are completely drenched with sweat from all that grinding and sail changing. So uh, there'll be a few crew members kind of wanting to change a t-shirt before they get too cold. <laughs> And uh, unfortunately, I mean, we've got a market here, Viva Mexico, they are back in sixth place and they're not on this final reach through the start line and then out uh, through the last leaving gate and then into the Mediterranean. Unfortunately, that decision to hold that jive, something I think that they kind of had to do that forced them into that bubble and they are forced to watch these two teams stretching out in the lead, certainly Wind Whisper Racing Team and Team Yayo. Team Yayo already on the right hand side of your picture with that masthead code zero. Wind Whisper Racing Team getting ready to deploy, but always in sailing here, Sam, that windward position, it's a comfortable one. The pressure's not on you to make the decisions quite so quickly. Yeah, it's a little bit safer because obviously you don't have any worry about um, having any wind shadow from, from the boat um, to windward and to be the lowered boat, you're always looking um, at your position um, and the windward boat is kind of controlling your, your angle and your boat speed a little bit. Um, but personally, it's great to have a, have a boat just alongside. Um, it's the best way to be sure that you've got your boat going as fast as possible. And uh, when you go off into the first into that first night, it's always nice to have someone just next to you to to push to be able to push a little bit harder. If you're not quite sure if you've got the right trim set up, um, there's nothing better than having a boat right there. To if they're going a bit faster, then you can just keep looking and make your boat go faster. On board with Team Yayo, Yelma Van Beek on the helm. Just just going out uh, of shot there, but on the bottom right-hand corner, Bauer Becking, uh, ocean race legend, uh, on board to share his wisdom for this first stage and wish the crew well. Now the Polish team, Wind Whisper Racing Team. So they're just, I think they're, they're, ta they're just bringing on the tack line, um, putting the tension in the masthead zero, so you can see that cable. Uh, tightening up and they'll be deploying that masthead zero any minute now, I think. 
see the work on the foredeck at the moment of Wind Whisperer Racing Team as they get ready to change. That bag going forward, opening up. I mean, they. this is the point now where you really need to start thinking about keeping everything nice and tidy because you're in this now for a week. Yeah, and um, I think there's been a bit... There's, there's a lot of spaghetti with all the ropes, the sheets, the tack lines, the furling lines. Um, there's there's tons of traps to fall into if you're not really rigorous with every single maneuver and um, like putting the bag down. Every every time they change sails, uh, it will go in the bag. It will get tidied away. Um, you've got to be ready for anything, and you never really know, especially here in the Med, um, what the wind's going to throw at you next. So um, I think that's the four deck crew are just always trying to anticipate um, one move ahead and, and try and anticipate what the wind's going to do and what the tactician's going to decide to do. There's been a lot of conversation about how upwind, how tight to the breeze we were going to see these VO65s and ultimately the Imokas as they exit Alicante. And the fact that we have got wind here and we are deploying the masthead code zeros with enough certainty to get the rest of the sails down and sort of packed away means that they're confident that they're going to be blasting away from the shoreline here out into that, that proper breeze. But this is going to be going on from this point, day and night. You've sailed around the world on the VO65s. At what point do you start saying, well, somebody better get some sleep now? Uh, I, I think there's, it's almost more important to be sure to get the best start. And, and you know, everyone's going to give everything they can. And it's great for the crew morale to be the first boat out offshore into that first night. And I think for these teams, it's actually all about getting out of the Mediterranean. I thought Bauer was going to say something, <laughs> but, but no, so yeah, it's that. Well, whether we can bring you that uh, comment from Baalbeking live or in replay, all of the action here from the water is going to be covered in detail by uh, Eurosport. And we brought the QR code to you uh, earlier and uh, it's going to be important here because, of course, these boats offshore in the crew, an onboard reporter and OBR, their sole job really is to bring us all the drama from on board. Photographs, videos, interviews, everything. So we will be keeping up minute by minute and certainly trying to beam that out to you as much as possible as these boats weave their way down to Cabo Verde. And Sam, is it just me? Is it just my enthusiasm or is the breeze picked up a little bit here? Maybe just they've just turned off the wind a little bit. Yeah, it looks like that the breeze has picked up and I just saw that they've just gone past that final gate. Um, we saw the yellow mark rush past, or, or the boats rush, pa rush past the yellow mark. Um, Team Yayo, they've already deployed their J3 as a stay sail. Um, and I guess Netty and his team on uh, the bow of Wind Whisperer will have that on their job list of the next thing to do. Um, or potentially, or do they see something else and do they think the breeze is going to change again? And, um, they, they just want to concentrate on getting those sails trimmed well. And yeah, there's a big heel angle. The, the mains are well eased, so they're getting to the upper end of the range of, of this sail configuration. Perfect shot from the helicopter here to see the difference in breeze. Team Yayo, I mean, we were saying before that that lured position that Team Yayo had wasn't really a threat. Uh, but look at that up to the top of the corner, just going out of view on the right hand side of the helicopter. You could see Austrian Ocean Racing powered by Team Geneva struggling with that masthead code zero. The dark patches across the water here, meaning that there is more breeze to come. Yeah, um, you have to be really reactive on the on the trim with um, these massive sails up and really have a great communication between the main sheet trimmer and the masthead zero trimmer. Obviously, they have to be eased together so that helm stays um, stable and the boat doesn't round up um, and, and luff up. Um, and the boats, they'll probably be happy that they've passed that final gate because they can actually uh, maybe power down in the big breezes, um, in the big gusts, um, and max, you know, get the best out of the boats and, and really accelerate in those gusts. Interesting to look at the deltas here. The difference was 43 seconds between Wind Whisperer Racing Team and Team Yayo. Now it's only 10 as we focus now on Murpuri Foundation Racing Team and Amber Sail 2. Murpuri Foundation Racing Team behind uh, to windward, Amber Sail 2. A little bit bow forward, but this is going to be a drag race here that 
Well, certainly might keep the sailors working hard for the next few hours because the next turning point is going to be the mark at Tabaka Islands. But realistically, they're going to be on this course or something similar for the next five, six hours. Yeah, which looks like um, a course that's going to um, be changing between, is it a masthead zero or is it a J1? So I think it's going to, that's going to be the question in the heads of all the sailors. They'll be watching the other boats to see what, what sail they've got up. Um, and uh, as I was saying earlier, the, the crews are just going to be ready to change at any moment. Um, and it's, <laughs> there's not going to be much rest going on. Rokas Melavinkas, as the skipper of the Lithuanian boat, Ambassel 2 on the right-hand side of your picture, is going to have to work hard here because look at this, Murpuri Foundation racing team just putting the bow down, just bearing away a little bit as that gust comes on, and that is just free speed for them. Every single time that they can gain a metre, half a boat length forward, it's just going to strip the breeze out of Ambassel 2 sails. So the advantage, certainly with Murpuri Foundation racing team at the moment, windward position, meaning that they are going to be able to attack. Looks to me like the mere period, they're a little bit more organized and they've got everyone up on the rail and um, that's the right thing to do is to just get the weight up and, and get past that boat um, as quickly as possible. Uh, Amber Sail 2, the crew working hard at the moment, trying to match the pace of Murpuri Foundation racing team to windward. <laughs> Look at this, just as we zoomed in there on Amber Sail 2 and now pulled out, it's a boat length to the, to the advantage of the Portuguese boat. The racing here in Alicante is the boat starts stage one, certainly very fierce as the breeze is providing plenty of power. The very first edition of the Ocean Race Sprint and our six VO65s are now well on their way out from Alicante. Speeds approaching 18, 19 knots and certainly one sailor amongst the fleet, Bauer Becking, has got an awful lot of experience of what it takes to take these boats around the world. Let's have a little bit of a listen to him. Yeah, to start us was OK. We're a little bit too early and... Uh... And uh, the ponies were on the fin, got again to start. Uh, but I think you just know with the time, he's, he's excellent at doing that. But I think uh, Kudus did a crew, they did an excellent job. Uh, we did the right manoeuvres, and I think uh, we just kept, uh, kept the game really uh, conservative. But I think in the end, uh, it was quite good to go uh, fast with, uh, with, with the master at zero. And uh, you can see the ponies are just the weather of us over here. So, uh, yeah, not, a, not a bad start up there for that. Smiles for Bauer backing on board Team Yayo. I mean, I'm sure he's pleased with his performance. He's also probably pleased to be out on the water where arguably that's where he belongs. So it was pretty wild out on the water uh, here at Alicante for this stage one of the very first ocean race sprint. 1,900 miles of racing to go, but the first few miles certainly had a little bit of everything. Some big breeze, some light winds, and some big shifts as well. Let's take a little bit of a, a look back at exactly how everything ha happened here. You can keep up to date with all of the racing out on the water. It's going to be pretty fierce, and certainly the sailors are going to be fighting for every mile they can. You can follow it all on the oceanrace.com as well as on Discovery Plus and Eurosport for all the updates going and later on this afternoon at 15:30 CET we are going to be there to cover our five high-tech hydrofoiling mockers out on the water Alicante has certainly put on the performance for the VO65s and I'm sure it'll do it again for the mockers here at the ocean race <laughs>